The ability to capture a moment, an emotion or story through visual means has always fascinated me. In the world of filmmaking, the cast of a hue, the flicker of a light and the vibrancy of a shade all come together to paint the story. Colors beyond just pigments on a canvas hold within them the power to evoke emotions, create an atmosphere and transport us to another world. But to do so, you need to achieve the right colors the right way, in the same way your favorite films do so. Each color holds many shades, and certain are more cinematic than others. But what makes certain shades of color look much better than others? And how can you achieve the right changes? In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how. So if you really want to understand color and learn the techniques to achieve those of the big screen, this tutorial is for you. The colors we see and the way they interact with each other can evoke strong emotional responses. A cool blue can evoke a sense of calm and serenity, while a warm red creates a feeling of passion and intensity. Filmmakers and artists use this knowledge of color psychology to create a mood and atmosphere in their work. But beyond physiological responses, colors also have technical properties that make them more visually appealing. Some colors have a high color saturation, which makes them appear more vivid and eye-catching, while others have a low saturation that creates a soft and dreamy effect. In addition, colors can also interact with each other to create stunning visual effects. For example, the use of complementary colors can create an eye-catching contrast, while the use of analogous colors can create a harmonious and cohesive look. Now as artists, we've all heard someone say that a camera is just a tool, that the camera you're using shouldn't matter. However, this cannot be further from the truth. Each camera has a different profile, a different color science, a different dynamic range, and so much more. To know how to use the right settings is extremely important. Therefore, understanding the color space transform effect is key. It will help you get your footage looking properly in your project's color space and enable you to transform log footage to the right look with proper color and contrast before working on your grade. So let me show you how that's done. Alright, so let's suppose you have LUTs for RE cameras, but you are shooting on another camera and you want to use RE LUTs with your camera. Would you think that's not possible? Well, then you're wrong. Because right now I'm going to show you exactly how you can use the color space transform tool to transform one camera's color space to another. So we have a video on the timeline shot with the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K G2. We will need to convert the color space and gamma of Blackmagic cameras to the color space and gamma of Airy cameras. Now you open up the effects menu and find the color space transform effect. Now let's drag it to our note. In the input color space menu we choose Blackmagic Design 4.6K Film Generation 3 because this is the color space that is used for Ursa cameras. And in the input gamma menu select Blackmagic Design 4.6K Film because this is the gamma that is used for Ursa cameras. Now select Airy White Gamma 3 for output color space. Because most of the Airy cameras use this color space, except for the new Airy 35, which uses color space Airy White Gamut 4. For the output gamma, select Airy Log C3. For your convenience, in the description of this video, I will leave the values input color space and input gamma for the most modern cameras that are on the market. Like Magic, Sony, Airy, Red, etc. But we will go over them in future videos as well. Let's leave all other values unchanged. So as you can see, we received a non-contrast low saturation video, which mathematically full corresponds to airy cameras which means we can apply LUTs the valid for airy to it by the way i just released my new film look LUTs if you're interested check the link in the description but i already have LUTs available for all other profiles as well so you can check them out and now let's create a new node for convenience let's call it airy LUT open up the LUTs tab and apply the airy LUT that comes with DaVinci Resolve it converts the previous selected airy log c3 to the most familiar rec 709 now let's add some cinematography to our video. Let's add some overall brightness by increasing the values with the offset wheel. Increase the overall contrast. Turn on the waveform to see our exposure in more detail. If you're interested in the video where I explain the difference between scope one and the other, please also write about it in the comments. Let's increase our contrast a bit more by increasing the gain value in the highlights until our waveform almost touches the upper limit of the scope. And let's decrease the lift values, aka the shadows, until the bottom of the waveform almost touches the bottom of the waveform. Slightly increase the overall saturation by increasing the color boost value. Now let's adjust the white balance to to do this, let's open the vector scope. As we can see, our image is very warm and has almost no color separation. 
To fix this, let's just move the offset point to the blue color and decrease the total exposure a bit more. This will help us increase the contrast visually. I see a slight dip in the shadows and to fix it without breaking the overall image, I use the lock wheel tool. This tool will allow, in our case, to correct the darkest areas without affecting all other areas. With all other areas, I mean mid-tones and highlights. Let's go to the log wheel item and increase the values of the shadow wheel just a little bit. That looks great. And now let's add even more cinema to our image. Let's create a new node and call it grain. As you understood from the name, we will use the film grain effect as we did in our previous videos. If you haven't seen our previous videos yet, but want to improve even more as a colorist and learn more techniques, then check them out at the end of the video. In the effects menu, we find film grain and drag it to our node. In this case, I decided to use the preset grain from 16mm codec 500T film. I really like its texture and the way it works with the image. Let's zoom in and look at the before and after. And as a final touch, let's make a little vignette to focus the viewer on the main character. To do that, let's go to the Windows menu, choose the round vignette and invert it at once, so that it acts only on the edges of the image, which you want to darken. To see what areas the vignette works on, let's click the highlight button. White marks the areas that are affected by the effect. Let's set our vignette so that it acts only on the edges of the frame with softening edges. Now use the offset wheel to decrease the overall brightness, thereby slightly darkening the edges of our image. Let's take a look at the before and after of using our vignette. At the end, for a final touch, we will increase the overall contrast a bit more. So here is the final before and after of the clip. So from here I would add my film LUT to give it the final changes to the color. And if you want to see how I color grade from scratch and make the LUTs myself, you can check out the previous video.